If you're one of the half a half a dozen people who's been watching this channel since the early days, you may remember that exactly a decade ago, my friend Channing and I went to somewhere. Here is Croy. This is where we need to go. To buy an old Morris Minor. There's a screw! Dick. Well, I never really got around to making any more content for the channel about that car. Uh, but I did drive it every day for two years until I had a bit, a bit of a disagreement with a hedge. Yeah. Not a good time. That was about nine years ago. Yeah, nine years ago, eight and a half years ago, something like that. And uh, the car was written off and uh, sadly uh, that was that. I took the insurance money, I went and bought an MX-5 Mark One, and that was good fun until that got loads of rust. Uh, then I bought another Morris Minor actually, a older one, 1954 Series 2 split screen, which I did actually plan to make a lot of videos for the channel about, uh, but the car was a piece of crap and that never happened and I kept that for a couple of years and sold it. Yeah, I did other cars. And then I bought a third Morris Minor about oh, two years ago. It's just after the first lockdown. Yeah, something like that. And now this car is undergoing some interesting work. And I've already done quite a lot of it, but I thought it was a shame to not film it. So here we go. This is video one of the Morris Minor project. <laughs> So here it is, this is the car. And if you've watched the original videos that I made getting the first car about a decade ago, you'll know that this car is sort of almost identical. It's the same color, almond green. It's got two doors, like my first Moggy. Um, and it's a 1098 model. Um, it's almost the same age, actually. The old car was a 1967, this one's a 66. So it's a D-plate. Um, and currently there are a few bits missing. Well, they're not missing, it's there. But um, yeah, so you see the engine's out at the moment. Man, my plan is to do some modification to the brakes and the seating inside the car and also to the clutch mechanism and the main idea is that there's going to be a new engine going in. It already has a couple of upgrades on it, well really just the one upgrade which is these wheels. These are Weller steel wheels meant for specifically for the Morris Minor and they are oh, I think they're 5.5J, 6J, something like that, compared to the original 4J um, steel wheels that these cars have which um, going to these wider wheels allows me to fit wider tyres, these are Yokohama Blue Earth 175 section tyres as opposed to the original 145 section tyres so much newer tyres in terms of design more grip and it rides a lot better too and I think you'll agree it sits a lot better on the wider, wider rubber as well wider rubber as well, say that five times fast over here in this corner you can see that uh, some welding's gone on, there was uh, quite a lot of rot in this corner here. I'll put up a little picture to show you what it used to look like. So I cut this strengthening plate in half and then made a nice new section of steel, much thicker steel, and cut that all out and welded it in there. So that's now really nice and solid and much stronger than it was originally. If you know Morris Miners at all, you'll notice that the wiper motor bracket is conspicuously missing from this area. We go where these two red bits are. That's because I'm actually going to modify the bracket to take a different wiper motor because the original one broke and it was a bit rubbish anyway. Uh, that's quite an extensive mod, so I think it deserves its own video. So I'll do more on that later. You probably also noticed earlier this weird apparatus here. What this is, is is a bracket which you can buy uh, from ESM Morris Miners, which is pre-made and it is designed to take the uh, pedal box from a Morris Marina, which 
fits into this hole here and bolts into those holes. What that allows you to do is it allows you to use the Morris Marina clutch and brake pedal assembly which in turn lets you use a proper master cylinder with a servo and it also lets you use a hydraulic clutch um, and fitting it is a little bit of an exercise you obviously have to cut a big hole in this bulkhead here where there usually wouldn't be one so you can see right through into the car here so here's the old throttle pedal which will be staying and then you can see the clutch and brake pedals there which won't be staying the um, bracket is actually only test fitted at the moment, it is tacked in but I need to finalise the fitment of the pedal box 100% and then once that's done I'll be cutting the tack welds out, removing the bracket and then properly prepping it with uh, some weld through primer and some bit extra bits of strengthening metal to hold it all together and then it will all get welded in permanently. I'm also going to have to do something about all this wiring because it needs to go around it. So if we look inside the car, you can instantly see we've got a aftermarket Mapney 14 inch steering wheel, which is quite nice. I've had that for quite some time actually. I bought that originally to put on my uh, first Moggy about a decade ago and I've held onto it because it's quite a nice little wheel. I've also got there a cheap Chinese uh, tachometer, rev counter. It's not very stylish but it does the job. I'll be replacing that at some point with a proper unit. And then down here we've got, instead of the original seats, um, a recently acquired pair of 1996 Alfa Romeo GTV uh, leather seats. And these are a really good little seat actually. They've got proper bolstering. They are properly constructed. They've got a nice proper metal frame. They move backwards and forwards on their own sliders. And they tilt. The backs tilt unlike the original seats and unlike the original seats they've got headrests so they are much safer they've got self-mounted seat belt buckles they're just way better and they are plenty small enough to fit into a little classic car like this and one of my most recent projects is actually trying to fabricate my own seat rail mount to get these to fit in properly that's probably what I'm going to be continuing with today actually right now I've shown you around let's do some work so here on the driver's side I've got the um, frame that I've been making which is going to support the uh, Alpha GTV seat and then that's going to get attached to the actual car and I need to make some strengthening plates which are actually going to go underneath the floor to hold it on. And you can see here I've got three feet in the corner, one there, the front, one there and one back there. And there's three holes in each and I've got some bolts just going through the floor to hold this in, in place because the fourth foot which is yet to be made is obviously a little bit more difficult because it runs here over this hump in the, um, in the floor pan to which accommodates the drive shaft so I'm going to need to make the angle of this foot a bit more special and have to sort of play that by ear this is just some ordinary angle iron, angle steel rather, that I got from the metal merchant. It's definitely overkill for the job, but should do all right. Okay, so I've ground and cut this bit down to shape, fairly extreme angles, just so it fits in there, like so, and it butts up nicely against that hump on the floor. So all I've got to do now is um, get the bracket out of the car and weld it in that corner.
Yeah. That should hold nicely. So I've got the seat base bolted into the car again and I've fashioned this piece just slot in there like that. And what I'm just going to do is tack it in place at exactly the right angle and then take this off the car again and weld it up. Okay, so that's all welded on now. I've cleaned it up a bit. So what I'm going to do now is drill a hole in the middle of it for the bolt to go through and then into the car. There we go, nice 8 mil hole. Back in the car, I can now use that hole to mark where I need to drill through the car's floor with the centre punch. surprisingly difficult compared to the rest of the floor. I think the steel must be reinforced around here. Although reinforced is a relative term when it comes to cars made by BMC in the 60s. So you can't really see it there but now that last foot is bolted in. So I've bolted in the seat base on all four corners so now the driver's seat is completely mounted. It's in there nice and sturdy and it slides I'll have it all the way back since I am six foot five and uh, yeah we've got the um, uh, rear adjustment and of course it because it's also from a two-door car it tilts forward to let you get in the back although I don't think anyone's going to be getting in there now that would be probably secure enough but this steel in the floor isn't the thickest in the world so what I'm going to do is on each floor uh, on each foot rather underneath I'm going to make some steel plates nice thick steel and then weld that to the bottom of the car and weld the nuts in place so that there's a nice reinforced area for the seats to sit on and then when that's done that with the seat completely installed and now that the uh, seat base itself is finished I can remove these two metal strips at the front and back linking the two sides I just put those on to keep the overall shape of the bracket while I was working on it but since that's all now fitted up and correct those can go I can also probably give these some paint so I'm here under the car you see I fashioned this piece of a really thick steel cut from some scrap metal I had and then I've drilled a hole in it put the bolt through from one of the seat uh, mount feet and I've put the nut on it so I'm simply going to tack weld the nut to the steel plate and then tack weld the steel plate to the bottom of the car and then I can remove the bolt and weld it all up properly and I've had to offset the hole a bit because of this cutout here in the floor, this embossed shape in the floor. And then I just need to do that for all four feet. Okay, welding is done for now. It's rather messy. Can you see it? Yeah. It's rather messy and is not completely done yet because there's just not enough space under the car, even with the rear end jacked up as high as my axle stands will allow it. 
there's just not enough room for me to get under there with my welding helmet and actually do the welding properly. Um, so I've done most of this one, pretty much all of this one, and this one back here. This one though, because it's right in there near the drive shaft, I haven't been able to get to it. It's also on a funny angle. So for this one, I'm just gonna cut the plate and put it underneath, but not actually weld it on yet. And at some point when I can get the car up on a ramp and stand underneath it, I'll finish up all the welding properly. I had to do a bit of welding inside the car as well because naturally I managed to burn through the floor in a couple of places. But that's all, it's all nicely sealed up now. So I've ground down a few bits, but the rest of it I'm just not gonna bother because this whole floor area, once the um, seat's all said and done, this will all be covered in dynamat. So that's gonna be okay. And there's two holes back here from the original uh, factory seat belt mount and I could weld those up but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to fill them with RTV and then put the dynamat over them and that will seal them up nicely without having to um, grind back any paint and get the welder out and start fires and stuff. I've had enough of that already. come out pretty well. Not going to win any fabrication prizes but they'll do the job just fine I think. And there we go, the driver's seat is in. And it does not actually look, if I do say so myself, quite smart. Sitting there on the carpet, all painted up, almost as if I know what I'm doing. So here I am sat in the driver's seat and it's all pretty good, I think. I'm nicely supported, my angle to the wheel is good. I've got plenty of legroom, finally. I am, as I said before, six foot five, so I need a lot of room. Or oh, in case you're um, from a metric country and watching, that's 195 centimeters tall. I am, so yeah, I can get on all the pedals nicely. Although I'm going to be replacing them, I can get on the brake nicely, throttle, clutch. The wheel is perhaps a little bit far away, but that's okay. I can always adjust the angle of the steering column because it's on a universal joint and just held on with a bracket there or I could just get another steering wheel with a bit more dish and that would sort it out. 
and I can scooch forward and the seat runners if someone a bit short of me was to drive this car. I've got the lever for leaning backwards so I can just, oh yeah, get the full gangster lean. Oh, there we go, yeah, this is how I'll turn up to all the car meets. I've made a roadkill style cardboard list of jobs to do on the car and it's fairly lengthy but they're all pretty doable and now I can scratch off this one. I think I need to add buy a new sharpie to the list. Right, well I think that just about wraps it up for part one but I'm going to dive immediately into making part two where I get my Nissan Micro wiper mod working. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe, rate the video, smash the like button, ring the bell, tell your friends, tell your enemies, all that jazz. Dick. <laughs>